Namaste today will be predominantly focused on prevention and early detection and the key points as far as treatment is concerned. In the next 45 minutes to one hour, we'll be discussing the various aspects of it. So first let us understand what is cancer. Now a normal cell, a normal cell in the body has a particular behavioral pattern. It is supposed to multiply only when it is necessary for the body. But when there is a DNA damage to the cell, that cell can repair the damage or get destroyed or turn into an abnormal cell which is called a cancer. Now what happens? What happens when there is cancer? So the cell that is abnormal instead of going into a cell death it starts multiplying rapidly and starts spreading around so when it starts spreading it starts consuming the body and destroying various organs in the body so that is why cancer is dangerous so you know if it is confined only to one area one just one area of the body or something like that or one organ it may not damage too much because it is confined. The, the problem with cancer is that it starts coming out of that boundary and starts spreading. So it is a growth for the sake of growth, which is the ideology of cancer cell. And that is why it is dangerous. So let us see what is happening in India and in this region. It is applicable even to the region. There is a WHO data. So. <clears throat> See, the most common cancer in uh, this region is the lip and oral cavity cancer among men, followed by lung, followed by stomach cancer and colorectal cancer, esophagus and prostate. Now, head and neck cancers are the predominant cancers among men. When it comes to breast, uh, sorry, when it comes to women, it is a breast cancer and the cervical cancer, which is mo the most common cancers followed by ovarian cancers and then rest of the cancers which we see among men as well are common among women. So we should, the main focus of our uh, whole strategy depends on what is common because this is what has to be avoided or prevented or early detected. Remember one thing, one in five people living today will develop cancer sometime during their life. So that is the incidence of cancer today. And the aim is to bring that awareness in order to prevent cancer deaths. So is the cancer incidence increasing? That's a very important question which I keep facing. And if you see the data, this is about 12 year data, you can see that among men as well as among women, the cancer incidence is increasing. This is the Indian data. So it is increasing and it has been constantly rising and it is going to rise for multiple reasons. One of the reasons is this. You can see in the 1950s, the average life expectancy of our people was below 40. <clears throat> So below 40 was the average life expectancy. And if you see it today, it has gone to nearly 70 and it is crossing 70, which means we are living longer for various reasons. Like, you know, our infectious diseases deaths have come down. People don't die out of TB or tubercle or uh, typhoid or any other illnesses. Today is the era wherein we are dying out of chronic diseases or critical illnesses. So infectious diseases are totally non-existent except the COVID which we are going through right now. Now, so what happens? What So what is the question? So what happens is as we get older, see there is a cutoff put here at 40. So as we get older, the damages in our body starts accumulating. It is just like a vehicle. So as the vehicle gets older, the damages, however well you take care of it, damages starts accumulating and you start seeing some or the other problems and that is what happens to human body as well so once you cross 40 you can manifest various diseases like the heart you know uh, increase in bp you can develop heart related illnesses you can develop stroke and many other illnesses as you get older so that is the way 
human body is designed because we are not designed to be permanently around so so we need to prepare for it so age is an unavoidable risk factor for all these diseases including cancer so apart from this what can we do so what we can do is be aware of cancer and when it occurs we can prevent it when it is or prevent death due to cancer because we are aware of it now there are two aspects of it one is pre primary prevention other one is a secondary prevention what do you mean by primary prevention primary prevention is avoiding it from coming altogether and secondary prevention is to identify it when it happens and treat it accordingly before it causes death so we should look at primary prevention first and then we'll go to secondary prevention now primary prevention is a uh, is a basic principle of risk reduction so if you look at these two guys one is wearing a full protection other one is unprotected there is no helmet there is nothing he is wearing though it's very stylish but when an accident happens the person who has a helmet and all the body protection is likely to survive better than the person who doesn't have any uh, you know any protection so that is the idea of reduction of risk and that is the idea of primary cancer prevention now how uh, how do we avoid all this this is this is a key factor you know this is the list of most common suspects when it, when a cancer comes first of all people think that you know genetic cause is the most important cause of cancer the answer is no it is the least common it's it contrib contributes about 4% 4 to 10% of cancers are due to genetic that is hereditary factors next uh, you know people think that you know diet is a factor you know because what i ate i got cancer yes that contributes and the contribution to of diet is quite important and we will be talking about diet in more detail as we go on so diet contributes about 6% and the associated other factor that is you know we talk about the obesity and uh, you know you know being lack of exercise and all that causes another uh, you know put together they cause about 20 plus percentage of cancers bad or rather in you know, a bad hygiene or lack of personal hygiene contributes to 10% of cancers we will be talking about that also they are predominantly because of infections and about 40% the major chunk of cancers 40% of cancers are caused by tobacco and pan masala so that you have to remember and it's very important and a small percentage about 25 percent of the cancers we don't have a particular reason why it is caused and we you know whether you are health you know maintain healthy lifestyle or all factors put to you know put together if you keep yourself healthy also it can happen so so to put in simple words everything under sun including sun can cause cancer uh, so how do we go about it so five key risk factor reduction factors that you have to keep in mind which you can can do some uh, to some extent alter are one is tobacco consumption second is alcohol third is infections the activity and exercise and diet and the pollution are the factors which you can control now tobacco is the most important and the most avoidable risk factor that exists today more than 70 percent of oral and lung cancers are caused by tobacco consumption and it's very important to remember that more than 40 percent of overall cancers are caused by tobacco consumption it includes direct smoking and secondary smoke that is you know second hand smoke when somebody else is smoking and you're standing next to them there are horde of cancers which are caused but remember you know today as of today it's about you know few years old data uh, you know 42 percent of men consume tobacco it may be chewed tobacco or smoked tobacco 
so 20, uh, nearly 40 percent or 40 plus percent consume and nearly 15 percent of women consume uh, tobacco as well so overall in the society nearly 30 percent people consume tobacco and second hand smoke up you know affects nearly 30 percent another 30 percent people so it is a significant number and what is also key factor over here is the youth the impressionable age group 13 to 15 years and in among them nearly 10 percent consume tobacco so that is an impressionable age and there is some work to be done in that age group what all cancers does tobacco cause you can see from head to toe there are n number of cancers which are caused by tobacco it is not one or two cancers it is every part of the body is affected by uh, cancer so you know uh, it is one of the most preventable cancer uh, you know causes of cancer and government regulations have tried it out but yes you know one way they can do it is completely ban tobacco which they have not been able to do and you know these things these warning signs do help to some extent but i don't know how far it will deter so these are uh, the fact you know the most important factor and if you are exposed if you are uh, using tobacco you know look at uh, consider stopping there is help available so choose life and not tobacco second important factor which is known to cause cancer is alcohol consumption 22 percent of cancers among men is caused because of alcohol remember alcohol is a solvent industrial solvent and it can increase the effectiveness of cancer causing agents so also it is shown to increase or cause cancer by the production or production of toxins in the body which is you know you know uh, it forms an aldehyde acetaldehyde which is the one which causes inebriation when you consume alcohol but see this you know indians and the southeast asian population has a deficiency in the enzyme that you know uh, degenerates aldehyde and this deficiency can make indians more prone to uh, cancers and they uh, uh, because the damaging factor the aldehyde accumulates in the body so indians are as such more prone to cancer related to alcohol and the uh, indians and uh, asians for that matter and alcohol uh, what all cancers can alcohol ca cause in fact again there are multiple cancers oral cavity cancer larynx cancer esophagus breast cancer among women liver and bowel cancers so again the most of the parts of the body are associated with alcohol consumption um, other factor which i spoke about is the infection or the hygiene related cancers 22 percent of cancers in india are caused by because or because of uh, you know infection and predominantly these are the viral infections and bacterial infection bacteria we know only one that is the h pylori bacteria which is responsible for stomach cancer and other things other uh, organisms are the viruses human papilloma virus for cervical cancer uh, uh, and many other viruses which are there like hiv hepatitis or epstein barr virus cause various forms of cancers and some of these have uh, vaccines uh, which can prevent the cancer and uh, you know and we need to know how to what are the transmission or how does it happen the most common way of transmission is person to person transmission which can happen especially for hepatitis it is from sexual route hiv is also from sexual route there are other things which are blood borne diseases so uh, various ways in which a virus especially hepatitis b hepatitis c and hiv can transmit and when when does it cause cancer it requires a long duration of time where it, it damages the liver and finally it's in a cirrhosis and cirrhosis leads to liver cancer so this is how it progresses and it can be prevented by 
hepatitis B vaccine today it is a part of a standard vaccination schedule um, other important cancer is a cervical cancer which you know many people keep asking me uh, whether I should take an HPV vaccine or not in fact uh, it is an important vaccine because more than 90 percent of uh, cervical cancers are caused by HPV virus and if given in time in teenagers uh, before sexual activity starts the virus uh, can or the viral infection can be prevented but I also want you to notice that a very small number of people who get HPV infection end up with cancer most of the patients will uh, come you know come back to normalcy in a specified period of time so very few of them get to cancer uh, finally and also the change from the time of infection to happen uh, cancer start, uh, starting of cancer takes about 10 to 15 years so if we diagnose any patient with hpv infection or any early changes of cervical cancer in this period with a pap smear test we can easily cure the disease before it starts there are vaccines which i spoke about there are three vaccines today available in the market uh, so any of these are equally if all of these are equally effective for uh, prevention of hpv related infections and thus cancers so other important uh, factor in the uh, today's today's life is this the office chair which is dangerous because we spend a lot of time sitting on those so what it means is inactivity diet and overweight are the key factors and contribute to us to some extent like about six to uh, uh, i mean uh, approximately 20 percent of the cancer related uh, related uh, cancers <clears throat> so how what are the key factors um, in diet we are very sure we have sufficient evidence today that processed meat causes or is responsible for uh, colonic cancer we have sufficient evidence so salami the sausages hot dog bacon all are considered group one carcinogens which means it's proven to be cancerous so uh, and the products of beef pork or red meat are considered probable causes so uh, so processed meat is con confirmed cancer carcinogenic whereas the others the beef and this one red meat are probably the probable causes of carcinogens in fact i had published it is one of the very few papers from india which has discussed this and i had published it and it was actually quoted by one of the nobel laureates in his research paper as well so uh, so something which we have to keep in mind is red meat consumption on the other side very often and very much discussed sugar is again a group one carcinogen because it is proven high sugar diet is proven to cause uh, you know overweight or obesity and obesity is known to cause multiple illnesses so in general high sugary diet is to be avoided as much as possible and there are multiple mechanisms by which it has been explained to cause uh, various cancers but as much as possible processed sugary diet that is <clears throat> the white sugar which you use or any form of sugar added sugars are dangerous for your health so uh, what is ideal body weight in fact bmi calculators are available for <clears throat> indians uh, bmi healthy bmi is below 23 uh, and and you know it is it has been noted that three out of four indians are overweight unlike the asian population wherein normal is up to 24 point sorry unlike the european and the western population for whom 29.9 is 24.9 is considered <coughs> healthy for indians uh, the cutoff is 23 because of our trunkal obesity we tend to develop fat around our abdomen so <clears throat> to uh, 
so it is very important to remember what all cancers are caused by overweight i have already discussed when i showed you the uh, sugary diet <clears throat> so what is healthy uh, this is very important to understand that you know what, what you should do to keep a healthy life be in healthy weight have a sufficient physical activity like uh, half an hours of walk per day or one hour walk per day uh, eat healthy diet that is you know green leafy vegetables whole whole grain fruits beans all these are healthy avoid processed food fast foods and all sugary diet uh, limit consumption of red meat and uh, you know uh, sugary drinks they are very dangerous limit alcohol and do not supplement its uh, supp food uh, the nutritional supplements like vitamins and all these are not expected to reduce risk of cancer it, it is just for your comfort that you are taking for breast cancer patients of uh, you know breast or for women it is very important to breastfeed the child so that you know risk of uh, cancer comes down significantly and after a cancer diagnosis be on a close follow up with your doctor when as and when happens and very key message and it is not it is much more important than putting over here is the fact that tobacco has to be avoided at any cost because tobacco is the most important cause of cancer today so apart from this what are the environmental factors which is less under our control uh, you know about 4% of uh, cancers are caused by environmental pollution many things including diesel smoke are is responsible indoor pollution contributes to 1.5% sunlight is another factor pesticides we don't know we don't have a strong proof what we know today and it is accepted by who also is that you know the pollution is an invisible killer except in delhi because it's visible uh, in rest of the places we can call it uh, invisible killer uh, contributes to about 20 per 29% of death from lung cancer so it is a quite a bad uh, situation as far as uh, pollution is concerned it is a fine dust which causes many illnesses stroke heart diseases uh, other lung diseases also so this uh, pollution is something which has to be kept in mind now this slide is very important because you know many patients come to me and ask you know i did everything i was leading a healthy life why did it happen to me there are very uh, two important messages in this there are diseases which are specific to a particular age group that is one so in 0 to 19 years of age leukemias and brain tumors are very common uh, or they do occur so it is not with any particular uh, because you did something it happened it just happens so in 20 to 29 germ cell tumors uh, that is testicular tumors or ovarian tumors leukemia as blood cancers thyroid cancers and in some cases skin cancers can happen uh, again in 30 to 39 year age of, uh, age group breast cancers and thyroid cancers pick up quite significantly and as you get older the other cancer starts kicking in thyroid cancers again from 40 to uh, 49 years breast cancers start increasing and as you get older 50 plus all other cancers like colorectum and breast cancer starts increasing in number lung cancer prostate cancer starts coming up in the picture so the the cancers of each age group is different and they do occur in those age groups and does it happen yes it uh, you know it happens even though you have led a very healthy life it can still happen and that is called bad luck so uh, but how can you better this you can better this by uh, you know means of early diagnosis so it is a accident scene when there is an accident and the the, the rider who got into an accident is moved into the ambulance and healthcare and if that happens within 1 hour the or in that golden hour 
the this person can be saved so that is the concept of early diagnosis in cancer it is not just one hour it gives you about a few months time to really diagnose and treat and you know, get a good result out of it <clears throat> so this is the concept so if it is uh, you wait for symptoms your uh, outcome can be bad if it is done early the or early diagnosis or screening diagnosed we'll talk about it later as we go on the outcomes and the results will be better so what is awareness awareness is to be aware of your body any new thing that happens in your body you are aware so it includes any lumps bumps any anemia weight loss loss of appetite tiredness fatigue any blood in any uh, any you know abnormal blood in the sputum in stool in vomitus in the phlegm so anywhere you see blood that can be a warning sign wound that does not heal anywhere in the body let it be mouth or anywhere else or skin anywhere any patches in the mouth skin or more mole growing newly itchy it's bleeding persistent in indigestion you are eating your newly it has started it is not going away soreness of voice which is not you know going away for more than 3 weeks any of these things it it is very important it, you know you have to wait for about 2 to 3 weeks before you investigate any of these could be cancer signs remember the sign of cancer is not related to cancer it is related to the organ which is affected so the cancer of a rectum will have Uh, symptoms like piles cancer of lung will have uh, symptoms like the tb or any other so it can be very very confusing for the doctor as well as the uh, patient because it cancer per se doesn't have a symptom it is the organ which is involved which has the symptom so very important you know and i feel this is one of the very important slides anemia or low blood or hemo low hemoglobin is one of the important signs and your heart rate headache brittle nails extreme fatigue this is very important fatigability tiredness dizziness lightheadedness cold hands poor appetite you know i'm not able to eat any food shortness of breath all these are uh, uh, symptoms of anemia and very often what happens is the doctor diagnoses does a blood cell uh, test hemoglobin is low they put iron it is not always right thing to do you know there are many causes of anemia uh, you know there can be excess it can be due to bleeding it can be due to menstrual bleeding it can be iron deficiency it can be genetic factors of anemia impaired metabolism uh, some other factors but also cancer can cause anemia especially the digestive tract like cancers are notorious for cancer causing anemia loss of appetite and all this Uh, so what is a dictum is we need to investigate any male with anemia any menopausal lady after menopause needs if if there is uh, anemia that lady needs to be evaluated for possible uh, for cancer as well it is very important to do that remember many patients come to me late because they had a lump they did not, they it was painless and they did not evaluate it very important cancer is painless when it starts it's a very important message and any painless lump ulcer investigated it, get it investigated pain is not a factor for uh, cancer very few of them are painful most of them are not so very important to investigate <clears throat> the other thing you know uh, when any uh, today when any early detection has to happen the patient's involvement is very important it is a self examination which picks up the most common cancers like the breast cancer the oral cancer and the self examination is possible for other illnesses also so we will see how it is to be done but the self examination means it is a responsibility of the individual to diagnose it or suspect it and come to the doctor so what are the components of self examination uh, it is looking at uh, you know yourself in a methodical way showing it to the doctor and few tests may be required to uh, confirm now <clears throat> 
I want to talk about breast cancer because that is the uh, that is the most common cancer among women uh, to begin with. So it involves what does it involve? Self examination. It involves the woman standing in front of the mirror, looking at her breast to see any changes, new changes, any abnormality. Feel the breast in lying position. Feel the breast in uh, standing or sitting position. Or, uh, these are the three components. How do you fix a date? When do you do it? You do it once in a month. For a menopausal lady, you fix a date. For a person uh, in the menstrual or younger ladies who are menstruating, it is uh, once a month, two or three days after the periods. End of periods, you can uh, keep that arbitrary date. And after that period, you look at, uh, feel the breast at that time. And you know you examine the breast standing in front of the mirror. Use the uh, finger, the soft part of your fingers to feel the breast. Feel in all directions, up uh, to down, and you know go around in a circular fashion. And all aspects, including the armpit, you have to feel. And do it in lying down as well as sitting position. Uh, what are you looking for? You are looking for any lumps. You are looking for any dimples. You are looking for any pulled up nipple. You are looking for any uh, discharge from the nipple. You are looking for any redness. You are looking for any skin changes. Any skin change for that matter. So you come, You uh, whenever these are there, you have to come and show to a doctor and the doctor should diagnose it further. Don't think that all these are cancers. Uh, very few of the changes will be cancerous but your duty is to identify something abnormal and come and show to doctor other place which you can easily look at is the mouth you just and mouth cancers are the most common cancers among men yet we get very late patients so it's very simple you stand in front of the mirror look at your mouth most of the times you can diagnose a cancer <coughs> see you know, there are a lot of changes which you can look for when you are looking inside the mirror. You can look at the white patches, you can see some nodules, you can look for these kind of lines which are called lichen planus. You, uh, any difficulty in opening mouth, tightness in the cheeks, that is called oral fib uh, submucous fibrosis. That is also a condition which can lead to cancer. Any red patch, patch or black patch. Uh, is dangerous. See, this is a white patch again over the tongue is very dangerous. We deal with them very, very cautiously. So, you know, why is it so important? You know, remember, you know, I showed you the white patch like this. If left alone, can lead to a cancer like this. So, this is very easy to treat. This is extremely difficult to treat. We have to reconstruct. We have to do a lot of work and the patient will require radiation afterwards. So, lot it complicates matters if you delay treatment. Uh, you know, I, we have spoken about these things, but remember more than 80% of world's can, oral cancers occur in our region, including India, Bangladesh, Nepal. These regions are the regions which are, you know, world's capital for as far as oral cancer is concerned. How do you do self-examination? Stand in front of the mirror, look under your lips, look around your uh, cheek, look at your palate, look at the tongue in all direction, look under the tongue, look for any changes like what I showed you, the lines or anything. Go to a doctor, there is nothing wrong if you are wrong. It is okay to be wrong because the doctor has to check you to be sure right so apart from this look at your whole body look for any new lesions which are larger than six millimeter any black mole or red mole or anything more than six millimeter which looks very asymmetrical surface is very odd borders are irregular colors are irregular or any ulcer it has uh, come up and it is looking very irregular it is uh, uh, mushrooming out though it is not healing it is increasing it is itchy all these factors any skin lesions you can or you should get it investigated among men testicular cancer is very important also because it happens in younger age group uh, in 20s and up to 40s and testicular cancer if any painless enlargement of testis should be investigated it could be hydrocele also, which is the most common, but testicular tumor is also 
uh, very common among that age group. So when these things, you know, your responsibility on, is on one side, there are few tests which are to, which can detect cancer there are tests which will detect cancer even before first symptoms occur so these are called screening tests and these are the tests which are very important when it comes to detection of some of the cancers the idea is you know the cancer is cured if cancer can be cured if detected early and remember again and again i'm insisting it is the screening tests are not done after the symptom starts it is done before the first sign or the symptom of uh, cancer occurs. So what are the tests available for women? It is mammography, uh, uh, which can be started at the age of 45. Survive, for cervical cancer, it is pap smear above the age of 21. For men, there is PSA testing, which should be started above 45 to 50. For both men and women, the uh, colon rectal cancer screening uh, with fecal local blood or colonoscopy which can be started above the age of 45. For thyroid cancer, some of the countries are following it. Uh, we can do an ultrasound of the neck for all patients above 21 years of age. Now, why is it important to do early diagnosis? Early diagnosis is done because the treatment is simpler for patients who undergo early diagnosis. It is shorter. The deformity of treatment is less, the complications of uh, the treatment are less, and the recovery is quick, and there is a high rate of cure. So this is the reason why we want to uh, uh, you know, look at early diagnosis and uh, treatment. Now, despite of all this, despite of many efforts, the, even today, the most of the cancers in India come in loco regional means you know locally advanced or metastatic means you know spread to other organs these are the most common cancers you see more than 60 percent of the cases come in advanced only about 30 percent or less than that come when in early stages where we can do effective treatment and cure them so this is the gap which we really need to fill today now, why again, I am giving you another example. You see this in early detected colorectal cancer, colon rectal cancer, we can just do a surgery and cure it. Uh, for a patient with an, uh, you know, stage two and three cancer, it is the, uh, you know, you need to give additional treatment. And in stage four cancers, it is uh, becomes Im nearly impossible to cure them. Look at breast. This is again very important in early stages, in up to stage two, it is the uh, there is a cure rate of 90% nearly. Uh, when it comes to stage three, it is 60%, and when it comes to stage four, where the cancer has spread to other organs, it is only 20% cure rate. So, early stage when the uh, tumor is only in the breast, the outcomes are exceptionally good. So it is applicable to most of the other cancers and the outcomes are dependent on how early you come. So the entire treatment becomes less traumatic. If you see the evolution of surgery, that also proves to you, you know, today, uh, you know, surgery for an early cancer, it is possible to do the surgery minimally invasively. We can do what, you know, uh, uh, good results we can give exceptionally good results with laparoscopic or robotic surgery instead of uh, uh, you know open surgery it is possible today many a lot of technology has come in so uh, you know it is not only less painful it is less blood loss cosmetically better shorter hospital stay it is quicker uh, you know back to normalcy least of the complications avoids in future also you know it avoids unnecessary major surgery best possible cure rates and when the surgery happens the immunity does not go down significantly so that is the advantage of robotic and laparoscopic over open surgery the outcomes are similar to open surgery when it comes to cancer so um, so this is how the robotic surgery happens this is the patient with the uh, robot with one assistant will be there 
and the surgeon sits on the console and operates laparoscopy the surgeon stands next to the patient and does it uh, but with a smaller wound itself so there is not much of a difference between laparoscopy and robotic coming to the hereditary uh, uh, cancers because again and again i come across this question as to uh, you know my somebody had cancer again the strategy differs so you need to uh, your particular case needs to be studied in detail before we advise you anything but remember you know i have seen many patients going for various tests because somebody had cancer it is not the way there are specific guidelines which have to be followed and there is a particular way there is method to that madness also so we have to follow certain a particular pattern of treatment for every uh, type of genetic cancer there are tests to be done so please do not go for some vague test just because somebody had a cancer in your family there are very particular genetic tests we can confirm whether you have a increased risk or not another important message uh, you know cancer is not the end of your life some people begin their life with cancer and achieve a lot this is one of the one of my patients who came to me and said you know uh, you know i have participated in multiple sports events i want you to show this photo and tell patient, other people that you know cancer does not mean the end you can still do a lot of things i am participating in uh, games multiple games i am winning the awards so it, this is how life is so i this happened about uh, nearly about 7 to 8 years back but i every time i talk about preventive health healths uh, or prevention of cancer i show this photo and tell people that uh, those of you who are interested in uh, cancer prevention or whoever have heard me here can also look at the my uh, ngo website samrohana wherein i we have done lot of awareness videos and we are coming up with more we are into uh, preventive aspects of cancer we are trying to create support groups and support videos for the patients also the future is to try and give some financial support to people as we go on by generating uh, uh, donations for particular cases we are trying that because we have the uh, income tax registration for that we will try and do it and help as many as possible <coughs> also you can download this book which is written by me this is a booklet in which i have discussed all the aspects of cancer prevention which i have discussed now much more in detail there are many aspects also you could visit my blog to have a look at uh, the various you know time to time updates which i give it is called oncoblog.in so you can visit this site and this will be directed to the blog you can have a look you can read many aspects and many newer things which come up so finally the uh, take home message is that you know cancer is not the end it is you know it is it can be cured in many cases provided you come early a third of cancers can be prevented by lifestyle changes that is important message cancer is painless when it starts in most of the cases and cancer uh, can be treated successfully if it is detected early so uh, along with this i would also like to convey the the uh, message of international cancer day which is close the care gap uh, the the message is to you know this is a uh, theme for 2022 and to up to 24 the message is to close the care gap which means you know we need to uh, close the gap in every aspect of cancer be it awareness be it early detection be it treatment and our attempt in the next two years will be to achieve this uh, various aspects of this you know reduction in the care gap thank you very much thanks for listening to me